the intent here today, obviously, there's been a lot of uh, rumors generated from this particular incident uh, because it still is under investigation. But uh, the intent today is to uh, rid ourselves of these rumors uh, based on the information that I'm able to release at this point. I want to start, first of all, by saying that uh, this incident still is under investigation by the Criminal Investigation Division, uh, CID as we know it. Uh, but there are a few things that I can, uh, 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 they can rule out at this point that I'm going to discuss here real quick. Uh, first of all, uh, there was no uh, forced entry uh, or break-in uh, into the home in this incident. There was no sexual assault of any type uh, as part of this incident. In fact, all uh, or any type of foul play has been ruled out at this point. Uh, all indications in the home uh, point to the fact that this was uh, self-inflicted trauma. Uh, there are also indications of uh, uh, marital discord uh, involved in this case. Uh, and again, uh, I just want to remind everyone that this incident is still under investigation. And, uh, and like any investigation of this type, uh, criminal uh, uh, in nature, uh, that it has to be investigated thoroughly. Uh, and until such time that all the facts come back, uh, this will not be released uh, to the public. But uh, I can assure you uh, they are working this investigation as fast as they can, uh, but they want to be thorough, and at the point where all the uh, information has come back and they have the facts, then it will be released uh, to the public. Now, I'll take your questions at this point on the particular incident uh, itself. Um, this woman... Her husband, from what I've heard, is still overseas. What's the situation with him right now? Now, he's been returned back. Okay. Uh, it, it, during, uh, at the point of the incident, yes, he was deployed, uh, but subsequent to that, he, is, uh, he has come back. He's back here now. So he's with the 4th Brigade? That's correct. How was he, oh, how was he notified? Uh, through uh, the, both uh, channels, Red Cross channels and then through the chain of command. Now, because of the rumors, have you guys increased any kind of security measures or anything that you guys can talk about? As yeah, as that? um, that's a great point. And, and there's no reason to, to increase any type of security measures uh, above and beyond what we do uh, based on what we know of the case right now. And again, uh, we've pretty much ruled out uh, any type of criminal activity, uh, such as, as you know, the rumors that went about a, potentially of a, a mass murder, a mass rapist. Uh, those are all uh, just rumors. And uh, based on what I just told you today, uh, all foul play in this case, uh, any type of foul play has been ruled out. So uh, we continue to do uh, all of the normal uh, police checks and community policing and uh, security at the gates that we normally do uh, because uh, there is no indications in this case that anything above that, uh, there's no criminal threat uh, out there that exist uh, to our soldiers and families on the installation. Based on the way things got so out of hand so quickly, are you guys looking at changing protocol maybe in the future so that something like this doesn't happen again if there's an incident like this on post? Absolutely. Uh, we uh, realize now that we got to get ahead of this. Uh, uh, sometimes this gets generated and we don't know it's being generated uh, down at the, uh, again, soldier and family level. Uh, but clearly, what we've learned from this, and uh, and we are going to be more proactive. Uh, uh, I am going to be more proactive in the future in, in getting what we know out to the community. Uh, unfortunately, in cases like this, though, uh, only so much information can be released at certain points in time until uh, that information is releasable. But uh, uh, we'll take a much more proactive stance on this in the future to allay any fears that people may have that uh, they have you know, some type of criminal threat uh, lurking in the neighborhoods or something like that. And that would be via emails going out to FRGs or something along that It would be all the different types of media that we have, Marn TV, the front line, uh, going down, talking uh, to our housing mayors uh, in the neighborhoods and letting them know what we know, uh, and, yes, talking uh, through the commands uh, to the FRGs, again, to allay any fears that, uh, uh, that something, again, some type of criminal threat exists out there. What about the family member, other family members of the 4th Brigade? Are you um, opening up additional services for counseling or anything like that that might, you know? Yeah, those are all available uh, to them, and, uh, and we do uh, uh, reemphasize that to the FRGs. Uh, 
Uh, and most of those services, again, are available in our Army Community Services. Uh, but yes, that's exactly what we've done for anybody that may have uh, additional counseling needs. We, we all know rumors are damaging wherever it is. Why are they especially, especially a problem on military posts when units are deployed? Well, again, it's uh, we're a very close knit community, and uh, and uh, not a small community, but a close knit community under, in the confines of uh, uh, of a post. And so, uh, when rumors uh, again are generated like that, uh, they run rampant, and uh, and again, they just move very quickly uh, through a community like this versus uh, you know maybe a community a little bit bigger than ours. So we have to go after these very quickly, and that's what we've tried to do. Uh, but there's still anxiety out there, especially during deployments where we've got, uh, uh, you know, spouses by themselves with their uh, with their children, and uh, so we take that very seriously, and we try to again uh, reduce uh, that anxiety or that fear that they may be feeling, and uh, by getting the correct information out, and that's why I'm uh, releasing what I am today.